Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here to talk about SEC basketball games for Wednesday night, February the 23rd. As always, we will go in order of tip-off. First one, Mississippi State goes to South Carolina, that tipping off at 630 Eastern. We've talked about this all season, Blake. South Carolina has been kind of unpredictable, but playing better of late. State has been awful on the road where it is one and seven. Finally got a win last time out at Missouri, and that was a close one. Your thoughts on this? Good luck. Um, yeah. These two teams, I don't know. Uh, no, I mean, it's it's exactly what you said. Mississippi State's not been good on the road this year, but they did just win their first one. South Carolina's been hit or miss, but somehow, as we talked about in our previous video, they are 7-7 seven and seven in the league now. They finally beat a team that's projected to make the NCAA tournament uh, in terms of their, their SEC wins. So maybe that gives them a little confidence here. Um, you know, against LSU, though, they did need a 33-point night from Jermaine Kuznard, which doubled his highest point total this season. So if you don't expect that to happen again, which I don't, uh, I think it's, it's hard to predict a guy to score 33 points. Um, can they still find enough to beat this Mississippi State team, even though Mississippi State has struggled on the road? Go back to the previous meeting between the two. Uh, I think Mississippi State won by 14, something like that. And yet the one thing they did in that game is exactly what we keep talking about with South Carolina. They're still a team. Def yeah, they're still a team defensively that's pretty good. And they forced turnovers. And yet Mississippi State turned over 19 times, still won by 14. Um, you know, one of the big reasons for that, South Carolina couldn't make anything from three. And Mississippi State just pretty much did whatever they wanted um, inside the arc. And they got to the free throw line a lot, too. And. So I think this game is probably more interesting. It'll be a much better game, I think, than the first time around just because of the dynamic involved there. Man, this is um... – by, by the way, it's two points in State's favor on Ken Palm. We don't have a line. I have a feeling it's going to be a pick em or or maybe even Carolina by a point or two because I think people are going to look up this State on the road thing. Um, it, this feels like a South Carolina win to me, Blake. Mm. There hadn't been many games this year that it felt like a South Carolina win to me, and that's no. Um, but but here, just at the Gamecocks at seven and seven. No, that's what I just said. I mean, so, they've won yeah. three in a row. They, yeah. they've won three in a row. They just beat their first NCAA tournament team in the league. So yes, I mean they're. I think you even argue they're they're playing better than Mississippi State right now. I don't think there's. I mean, you could make that argument if you wanted to. I still think about Mississippi State, and I'm like, well, their last two wins coming against Missouri, they had the four game losing streak, but. Really, nowhere in that four-game losing streak did they play that bad. They had their chances at LSU. They had their chances against Alabama. Um, played pretty well at Arkansas. So, I mean, they haven't played bad. They're just, as we talked about, they're just the team that you just don't, you cannot figure out. And, oh, what do you know? Now they're playing another team that you feel like you just cannot figure out. Um, I'll pick South Carolina. That was kind of what I wanted to do initially because I just think that it's probably a decent enough setup and you've got to, we always say when you play a team like this twice, I think you can get some different results, especially if the matchup just isn't doesn't feel so one sided, as we said, like with an Arkansas Missouri scenario. I don't think this is that. I think this is just one where, you know, South Carolina finally has some momentum and they're seven and seven in the league and I keep calling it the Frank Martin special. This may be it, where they just all of a sudden pop up and they're gonna somehow finish with a winning record in the SEC play or at least go five hundred. To do that, they have to win this one. And toss-up, as you said, it's probably going to be – I I don't think South Carolina will be favored. I think Mississippi State will have, be a slight favorite maybe by the time all is said and done, uh, unless everybody just goes and runs to their their bookie after we pick South Carolina and decide that's um, putting all the money in on them. But I don't think that's going to happen either. So, uh, yeah, I'll pick South Carolina. Toss-up, 50-50 game. I think because they can turn Mississippi State over – and I don't yeah. necessarily think Mississippi State's the kind of team that's going to turn them over a lot. I just think that may that may set up okay, especially for a game in Columbia. So yeah, let's let's give the Gamecocks another one here, cruising right along, uh, and you know maybe wind up with the top. What I mean, they could theoretically still wind up with the top five seed in the league. That's crazy. <laughs> and just think about, it. but but they've done this before. Like how many yeah. times have we said this over the years, where this team just pops up out of nowhere and finishes fourth or fifth in the league? If they win this game, 
they've at least got a shot to do it, although their remaining schedule is pretty tough. So, Well, one more stat. Mississippi State, 218th in the country in terms of turning it over. State, or excuse me, Carolina is, I think, 36th. It is uh, at forcing turnovers. It's on their home floor. Of course, Carolina turns it over. Even more than it forces it, or almost, it, the number's almost the same, but State is not a, a team that forces a ton of turnovers. So, again, home court uh, style matchup there could be an issue. So, I think there will be a lot of free throws in this game. Yeah. I, I tend to believe this will be one of those games because, again, you don't have two teams that necessarily want to take a lot of threes, I think. And I just think that it'll it'll be your, usual, your usual physical type game between these two teams. And so I think free throws will certainly come into play here too. At the same time, which is 7.30 Central, Ole Miss goes to Auburn. Auburn a 16-point favorite on Ken Palm. Auburn coming off a loss. Mississippi coming off a win at a probably disinterested Georgia team. A little uncertainty on the injury situation for Ole Miss. Jarkel Joyner and Matt Morrell, which are Ole Miss's two best remaining players, were out for – Mysterious circumstances, uh, maybe it was the flu. Sounds like that was maybe going around the team because you had a couple of other key players playing ill. Um, I don't think it's going to matter in terms of who wins this game, but if 16 is the line, it, it could influence covering. But I don't know. I, you wonder with Auburn if they're not just going to come out guns a-blazing and it just won't matter. I mean, you think about the – Arkansas lost for Auburn. They came back and pretty much controlled A&M from start to finish. I would anticipate this is kind of the same scenario here um, coming off the Florida loss. And you go back to the first game, I mean, this is worth keeping in mind, and that was on the road, as we've said. And someone pointed out in the comments yesterday, I think it's a good point, and I think we've kind of said this, but it is worth re reiterating here. Auburn's not the only team in the SEC that has road issues. I mean, it really no. – I mean, a lot of teams do, right? I mean, it's just that's just the nature of the league, and I think we've kind of said that from the start of January on. I mean, it's just that's just the league this year. So we're, we're not saying that necessarily to say that, oh, you know, Auburn can't win on the road. Well, a lot of teams can't win on the road, and I mean, they can. They can win games. They just aren't playing as well. So I think that's yeah. I don't. I don't think we should overblow that. But you know, it is worth pointing out that Ole Miss was up like, 14 on them in the first game between the two. Um. So, and that was without Jarkel Joyner. Now, it was with Ruffin, who only scored seven, but still, as we know, he's a pretty impactful player, but he's out. That was with, um, you know, some of these other guys who I guess we assume may or may not play. We don't really know. So, yeah, I mean, clearly I'm going to pick Auburn to win this game. There's just so much variety in terms of, I think, how it could play out. But if that number is 15 or so, I'm, I'm still going to probably pick Auburn. Um, even, again, not knowing who's going to play for Ole Miss. But that's kind of been the theme all season, right? Is we just – you never really know, I think, in that scenario. And, you know, I will say, I mean, Ole Miss is one of those teams. When we look back at it, you know, I'm looking back at the numbers here and just the matchup, the head-to-head -head, uh, over the past several years. I mean, Ole Miss is one of those teams that's kind of given Auburn trouble. And that is something to kind of note. I mean, I'm, I'm looking back at the head-to-head, -head, going back to – man, I mean, this is a pretty – I guess going back to 2018-19, Ole Miss has, you know, gotten a pretty good good advantage on Auburn at times. And uh, I think is that a, you know, a matchup thing, a, a stylistic thing? It all comes into play. But I just – maybe that's something, too, if you really look at it and you're like, well, maybe that 15 or whatever the number is going to be is too high just because Ole Miss has played Auburn traditionally pretty well, at least, I think, since Kermit's been there. So maybe you put some stock into that. I just – I don't know. I, I just think Auburn, this is one of those bounce back spots that you kind of count on with teams like this. But with the way Ole Miss plays defense, maybe it makes it a little tricky. If it's above 15, I'm probably not going that high. I just don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable probably doing that just because I think, eh, you know, Kermit can do some things defensively, I think that could, could cause some issues for Auburn. And we kind of saw that the first time around at times. But yeah, I'm clearly going to pick Auburn to win the game. Yeah, I don't think I would touch this unless you know what the health situation is. So basically every other game Ole Miss has played this. I mean, that's, that's what kind of what it feels like. We talked about it. It's just – Yeah, like but I mean, this is, this is more uncertain. Like, we don't know what happened with we, – we know Ruffin's done for the year, right? But, like, the joiner 
the morale yeah, but, I mean, thing was think that, about how many games we've gone through not knowing if Joyner is going to play and like it's just I yeah. feel like this has just been the theme like the whole season and but now I mean but yeah, now it's, it's morale like too um, as I say you don't you have no idea so I just I mean I can't imagine a lot of people have been living off of Ole Miss bets this year it's because I just I can't imagine that's have, a team that, an issue uh, well, if you have, you're doing something right because if you're making money off, uh, I guess, just the unknowns with this team and what you're going to get, because um, it, it is crazy to think about. Like, if you look at that, have you have you looked at their their overall like picture this year? Look at all the decent teams they beat, and it's just like, I mean, you just don't know though. Like, you just don't know what you're going to get necessarily. Um, so, I, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, but clearly we say all this to say that if Auburn loses this game, I think we'll all be shocked. But as for how close it is, that's a lot of that's dependent on who steps on the floor for Ole Miss. So that's when a good it, point. Um, they, they've beaten Memphis, Dayton, MTSU, which is suddenly looking like a better win, Mississippi yeah. State, Florida, Kansas State, LSU. I mean, that's a – They've beaten some good teams. But, I mean, they just taking care of business against some other teams. It's being an NCAA tournament borderline team based on those big wins. That's why I call it a lost season because if they were at full strength, they'd be right there probably, I think, with a chance to get in. But they just had so many different lineups, so many guys missed time. Um, it's just hard to – yeah. I'm sure they're going to look back at this one and think about the what-ifs. So, Okay, next one, Kentucky. This one at 8 – or excuse me, 9 Eastern. We have said something that's made Oreo howl, which is not not hard to do. Yeah, that's um, all right. Nine Eastern, LSU goes to Kentucky. Um, I guess, do we know, speaking of health, do, do we know with Kentucky no. yet? <laughs> we don't. Like, yeah, I, don't, I have no idea. I, right? I've never seen I mean, a season like this. Have you? Well, this again, we, we try to do these in advance. I mean, if we did these hours before game time, it'd be different, I suppose. But even then, I, I always say this about college games. It's much different than, like, you know, NFL or NBA. Like, you you don't get injury reports, right? Like you don't get the, the, the injuries coming out 24 hours and like, you just don't get all that necessarily. So it's, it's hard to know. Um, but I do know that I just saw a shorthanded Kentucky team just steamroll Alabama for a, a decent portion of the second half there. We don't need no stinking point guard. <laughs> well, but the thing is, there is a difference with Alabama and LSU. And LSU, yeah. Th this is not a team you want to play without your point guards. Defensively, there's a big difference, and there's a big gap there with these two teams. And, you know, when you're comparing LSU and Alabama, there, there is such a significant difference. And I think that's what can probably concern you a little bit if you're Kentucky because you're looking at this and saying, all right, this is a team that is just – they force turnovers, they, they play, you know, the Havoc style of defense – that is going to force some issues, I think, at times. Um, but, but, I think where Kentucky, I say that though, I mean, Kentucky's been good in a lot of areas, but we know Kentucky is really good if they can drive the ball and either score in the lane, hand off to Shibway, or kick it out for an open three. I think that they will be able to do that against LSU. And I think the reason why is we've talked about LSU foul trouble at times um, because of the style of defense they play. And I wonder if that's not something that comes into to effect here. And when you look at it, you know, you talk about kind of the difference in um, points and such. Well, we've always talked about Kentucky. They're making threes, but they still get a large chunk of their points from inside the arc. Like they're still getting, what is it? 60.4%. I'm looking at Ken Palm. 64.4%. 60.4% of their points are coming from two. So, I mean, that's that's a significant number. And I think when you look at it on the flip side, LSU, to me, has been better probably defending on the perimeter than they have if the ball gets to maybe the paint at times. And so I, so I wonder about that. And, and again, whether that's maybe just fouls or I, I don't know how that plays out. But I think this is one of those games with the way LSU plays defense <laughs> – you hope you get the the right refereeing crew because if you don't, I think this is one of those games to me where because of Kentucky's ability, if depending on who they have, we have no idea who's going to play and who's not going to play. Um, but if Wheeler's back, that's significant, I think, in a game like this because 
otherwise, I think it. I don't want to like put this the wrong. I think it's going to be really hard for Kentucky to beat LSU if they're having to play five guys. Does that make sense? Like if they're yeah. just playing five guys the way they did against Alabama, I think it's a much tougher task because of how LSU plays and because of their defense. Um, that would be one thing that would concern me if I'm Kentucky. But you just don't know. And again, we're there's so many different hypothetical scenarios you could point out based on who plays. But the fact is, we don't know who's going to play. And I just think that becomes an issue here in a game like this because of LSU's defense. So, well, two things: who was it that got Kentucky going against Alabama when when Kentucky was down? Right, it was Grady. Yeah, Grady just popping threes. Now LSU sixth in the country defending the three. I don't, I don't know if. And you would know more than this if if defending the three is more of a random stat or if it's a skill. Although with LSU, with its athleticism, I, I would tend to lean towards the latter. So I don't know how that resolves. Well, I, th- I think the thing I would I would keep in mind there is we've talked about how Kentucky's a better three point shooting team, but Kentucky's still not a team that relies on the three point shot. They're still a yeah. team to me that's going to get the majority of their points either from two or the free throw line, and. But they have to be able to hit some threes. And I think they don't take a lot of threes. And I think that's something, if you just get Grady that hits, let's say he hits three or something in a game like this, like to me that's significant because that is something that kind of push you a little bit just, just based on the matchup. And remember, let's go back to the first time these two teams played, right? I mean, LSU won this first meeting, but that's all the way back in what? That's the first game of their, either first or second game of the season. I don't remember for, for the two teams in um, SEC play. Remember, Wheeler doesn't really play in that game either. <laughs> remember, he took the shot early in that game, and I don't remember the scenario now, but he got basically knocked out early in that game. He only played a couple minutes. Grady hit some big shots. He was 4-12 from three. I, have to, I forgot to look this up. But this is where you had, like, Mints. This was a big Mints game. He had 16 points. Um, Washington didn't really play well. He only had five points. So i think that's the difference here and, and to me that's what also kentucky went 10 of 20 from the free throw line yikes um hey, that was th- not there's, gonna there's an interesting it. little sidebar in there lsu's free throw free throw defense is sixth in the country so no. i, w- I want to say I'm, I'm not going to say lsu isn't elite defensively but there's a little bit of noise in those numbers yeah i mean that here's what i think this will come down to and <laughs> To me, I think it comes down to something we haven't even talked about yet. We've talked about it a lot this season, but can LSU score enough (laughs) against Kentucky? That, I think, is the difference here. Because Kentucky defensively, as we've seen, they're they're not a team either that you're going to necessarily feel great at going up against. Because I think they can, you know, force you to do some things that will, you know, either force you into some mistakes. They don't force a lot of turnovers. But I just think with with Shibway's presence and those kind of things, can LSU come in and score enough consistently against Kentucky? And and I guess it's on the flip side of that is whoever plays for Kentucky, how does that unfold? I'm going to pick Kentucky in this game. I think there's a lot of unknowns as for how this game could play out. I do think it's probably a tougher test, though, than Alabama was because of the matchup. Um, you know, if you ask me if LSU or Alabama is a better team today, uh, it's a toss-up. But I think matchup-wise, stylistically, I think LSU is probably a tougher matchup for Kentucky than Alabama is. So... That is that is something I would look at, and and again, it's all going to be dependent on who plays. But I think that is something in the back of my mind. If if you if you can craft an LSU upset here, which yeah, I mean it'd be an upset, I guess, but like still, I think LSU is a good team. I think it's it's that it's can they get the the balance on offense? Can they get that sort of offensive game they're going to need? Can they force enough turnovers? Depending on who plays for Kentucky, and I think can they limit. Kentucky's efficiency inside the arc uh, because I think three point wise I don't you know again Kentucky's not going to be a team that's going to put up 33s in this game I don't think unless LSU just says hey we're going to pack this sucker in and you beat us from three maybe I don't see that but um, a lot of different a lot of different interesting little nuggets and storylines in this game but it still comes down to what I saw from Kentucky against Alabama even shorthanded and that's something they're really good. Yeah, I, there's just all kinds of things I look at statistically and otherwise that are fascinating in this matchup. Um, LSU really not good at keeping other teams off the free throw line. They are, according to Ken Palm, 322nd in the country in free, th- free throw to field goal attempts. That's not good. Now, again, 
teams are not hitting them when they're getting there. So they're, they're kind of getting bailed out a little bit. But it, and, and I never would have thought this about Kentucky with their style of offense. I mean, I kind of knew it, but they're 295th in the country at the rate they get to the line, which, yeah. is, which is a very un-Cal thing with, with the point guards. I have known, of course, the, the point guards is another issue. We don't know who it's going to be. I'll, also, speaking of point guards, who's number one in the country at forcing turnovers and steal rate. It's, it's, or not at turnovers, but in steal rate, it's LSU. Right, and, and, and again, LSU, yeah. Kentucky could have its third point guard, but then he didn't turn the ball over against Alabama, which is a different yeah. matchup. I mean, that's that's, I, yeah. I just get more confused as I look at this. And the other thing, let, let's say that we know they're getting Washington and Wheeler back. I wonder how much that means because we've seen what both those guys have gone down with injuries like three times now. One or both those guys could play and be out of the game in five minutes. I think having them back, I would feel much more confident about Kentucky, and just just naturally because they are a team that you know. Again, we we've seen them over the past. Outside of Arkansas, I don't think anyone's played as well over the past you know whatever month. Take your pick. Um, we've talked about that. I, I think that they have just been on a different level too. And I mean, even Auburn, as we said, that they they've had their their bumps on the road, but um, still, it's just. <laughs> It's so hard to call a game like this not knowing if Wheeler and or Washington's going to play. If one plays, it's different, but there are still different nuggets you got to point out in a game like that. If both play, then it's also different. I just, to me, we have to keep in mind too with LSU, they're another team that, if you look at it, like they, they haven't been great away from home either. So I think that's another team that you kind of look at here and remember that, like a lot of SEC teams, they hadn't played, that'd been great. And specifically, they haven't been great scoring the ball necessarily, uh, I think, in some of these games on the road. I mean, look at what they just happened at South Carolina, right? I mean, think about it. Remember, we're talking about a team that just, just lose at South Carolina. So, and you, we mentioned in that game, that was one of those games where LSU turned it over a little bit. Um, they just, they could not find enough consistency offensively. They couldn't make threes, couldn't make free throws. Um, so, and I also wonder about the offensive rebounding aspect because both these two teams are really good offensive rebounding wise because i mean you know we talked about lsu they just got so many different guys that can go get the ball uh, but on kentucky side you've got oscar shibway and you know some of these other guys that, that can also do things like that so this is a really sneaky i mean it's not a sneaky good matchup but but these two teams this season this is probably one of your more intriguing matchups in the sec if you just pick two teams i think kentucky and lsu is a very intriguing matchup just because of the, the makeup of the roster how they play and I think LSU could absolutely win this game, um, depending on who plays, who doesn't. But but I think Kentucky is just there's no way I can pick against them just based on how they played, even without yeah. two of their top players. And again, I, I do think I could see this, and maybe I'm wrong here. I know we point out the free throw rate and fouls. But I, I could see this being more of a free throw type game where a lot where you get some fouls, depending on again the crew. Um, but I think the way these two teams play, I could I could see this being one where maybe LSU does not get the calls they want with how they play defense, and maybe you get some more of those kind of you know aggressive type fouls that maybe you don't get in you know Baton Rouge or whatever. Um, who knows? And I think there, there's just so many different ways this could play out. Um, so I, I'm going to pick Kentucky, but it's we're recording this on Tuesday morning. We don't know who's going to play and who's not, and until we know that, I mean, it's hard to have a definitive answer, I think, on how strong you are about that pick. Yeah, I still trust Kentucky to figure it out because Kentucky's been good at that all year. And LSU, too, I mean, just quickly, I mean, LSU, let me go back. They didn't play, I guess, great there last year, but um, I'm trying to think back to some of the games they played at Kentucky in recent years. I mean, I, I think the one I'm thinking of is that, what was that, the – um the game they won there a couple of years ago uh, was at 19 maybe, but yeah, that's, that's still been several years. So we'll see. Um, I think it should be a good game, but how good of a game it is depends on who's on the floor, I think. So any, Oh, I, I had one thing I meant to bring this up earlier. You talked about road. I've, I've got road records of 10 teams in the league in front of me. It's all seven of the teams. Hey, I think you're oh, muted. sorry. I did. Um, road records <laughs> meant to bring this up. Um, Kentucky five and four, Auburn seven and two, 
Arkansas four and three. I think everybody else in the league below five hundred. Um, even Tennessee, which right. is really good, four and five. So we talked earlier about winning on the road and how hard it is. There you go. Yep. No, that's um, that's why you're usually going to default to picking the home team. So yeah, that's what we do here. Okay, tell folks about our partnership with Action Twenty Four Seven. Yep. Description below. Click on that link. Use the code South14. First deposit, they'll match up to eight hundred dollars. So if you want to uh, bet on any of these games, right there. Click on the link. Code South14. Okay. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. That helps us out. We got baseball stuff coming up. I had a wrap up last night with William Drummond on the weekend. Should have another one coming probably Thursday to preview next weekend. We will be back on Wednesday to, uh, excuse me, to recap Tuesday's games. We'll be back on Thursday to recap Wednesday's games and then also to preview Fridays. So thanks for watching. And again, be sure to hit that subscribe button.